So today we're going to go over the week three quiz, week five quiz. Okay, week three quiz we already went over. So the week five quiz will go over punctuation. And you're going to learn how to use the quotation marks. You're going to learn how to use commas. I um, mean, you already know how to use this, but it's more like a review. And so without further ado, I will now share my screen. And then you got to tell me if you see it. Um, do you see a yellow page? Yes. Everybody see yes. a yellow page? It's, and then I s has week four instructor session agenda? Yes. Are you starting class now? Yes. Am I too early? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm recording this, so we could still go over it. And then, then the, the only thing is uh, at 1.30, I will go over again the same material so that people coming in at 1.30 are not going to go, Oh, but you started early, and you're supposed to only start at whatever, okay? So you get to see it twice. Um, okay. That way, you can remember it better for your quiz. The more you absorb it, the better you, you know, it's all about repetition. And that's the thing. Yeah. If, you, if you guys ever go into teaching, you're going to find that you're repeating yourself over and over again. And I always felt the best way to learn English grammar is to teach English grammar. That's what it is. Because every bunch of students, I teach the same thing. So I, I, I've learned my English grammar by teaching it. So um, basically for today, we're going to be use, studying quotation marks. So this is the agenda. And so we're going to do the week five quiz prep, week five practice quiz, and then the week five peer review forum practice, which you guys don't really need because I went over the peer review last week. And then the week four rough draft, if you have any, any, any questions about the week four forum and that sort of thing. So let's go over part of it. We'll go over it again. So in, the week, in week five, you have to learn about quotation marks. So use quotation marks around dialogue. You need a beginning and ending quotation mark around dialogue. Use italics around movie titles, book titles, or any other title. Titles need to be italicized. Remember these two rules. They are crucial for this quiz. And so, yeah, in 10 minutes, I will, in eight minutes, I will do this again because people are going to be coming in at 1.30. So quotation marks are used to quote dialogue. You must use both the beginning quotation mark and ending quotation mark around a dialogue. And so here you have John says, Michael is here. What's wrong with this? Why is this wrong? The quotation mark isn't at the beginning of Michael. It's at oh, the first one at the end of here. Right. So the first one is wrong because there's no quotation mark at the end of it. And the second one is wrong because there's no quotation mark at the beginning of it. And correct is you got to have John says comma and then quote beginning quotation mark period end quotation mark. So then your quiz question will be is this a correct or incorrect sentence? Is there a missing quotation mark? And so A, B, C, which one is the correct answer? C. C. What's wrong with A? The quotation mark isn't at the beginning of George. Right. And what's wrong with B? It's not at the end of home. It's not at the end of home. So because you guys came in early, you're going to know this quiz like this. So on the quiz, watch out for incomplete quotation marks. There are a lot of quiz questions like this. You must have quotation marks around both sides of your quotation. So when you do your APA uh, citations, when you do your APA for your direct quote, you need to have a beginning quotation mark and you need to have an ending quotation mark. A direct quote means that you are quoting directly from the source. Usually when we do numbers, statistics, medical facts, historical facts, scientific facts, we do direct quotes. And, and then when we have to have quotation, author, date, uh, page number. That's APA. Then when, even when we paraphrase it, summarize the quote in our own words, you don't need quotation marks anymore. You just need uh, author and date. So that's something to remember for APA, that for APA, you do not need quotation marks for paraphrase quotes. You only need quotation marks for direct quotes. And you have to know the difference because in week 10, I will be asking you to, to do a direct quote and a paraphrase quote from three credible sources. 
So start thinking about APA now so that you can start looking it up. And not, don't wait all the way to week 10 and then freak out, which is what happened in my previous classes. People freak out when they, when they hear the word APA. So uh, why are these sentences wrong? In Jason Bourne, Nikki Parson uh, tells Jason, remembering everything doesn't mean you know everything. And so what is wrong with this sentence? Uh, April. Okay, so we're missing an end quotation. And then in Born Identity, Nikki Parson tells Jason, remembering everything doesn't mean you know everything. And then this one is incorrect because it's missing a beginning quotation mark. So these sentences are wrong because you need quotation marks on both sides of what someone is saying. And so the correct sentence would be in Jason Born, Nikki Parson tells Jason, uh, remembering, here you have a beginning quotation and an ending quotation. The thing is, when I present this to you, this seems really obvious. Then when they give you the quiz and you've got to see, is A, B, or C right, then everybody goes, oh, then, then, then that's when everybody's eyes <laughs> glaze over. Because you've got you to be careful. You've got to look for this. Then you've got to carefully look for this. And then, and then the, and the quiz tries to confuse you by giving everything that looks almost the same. There's this one little thing different. It's kind of like playing one of those games where you've got to find where something is wrong with the picture or something like that. Uh, when do we use, oh, when do, Mavel says, when do we use quotation marks? Is it used for talking? So this sentence is correct because it has a beginning quotation mark and an ending quotation mark. My father's favorite saying is, don't pull tomorrow's cloud over today's sunshine. Where is the missing quotation mark? So this is an actual quiz question. And here, the missing quotation mark is before the word don't. So that would be the answer. So, you would, you, so once you put the missing quotation mark before the word don't, then it becomes correct. So that, this, that's, that's pretty much um, all you need to know about this part of the, um, you also, about this part of the lesson. Everything, everybody good? I'm going to see if anybody came in. Um, so why are, did we do, we did this, we did this. Okay, you also need to italicize titles. So find a truly original idea. It is the only way I will ever distinguish myself. It is the only way I will ever matter. John Nash moans in, this is the name of a movie, A Beautiful Mind. And A Beautiful Mind was a movie made about a biography of John Nash, who was a famous mathematician. So did anybody see the movie A Beautiful Mind? I take that to mean Asia? Yes. You saw yes. it? Yes. What did you think I of it? I actually had to watch it and write a um, paper on it when I was did my LPM program. Oh, so, so some, some very good teacher made you, made you write a, a paper on it. Okay, so whenever you have a movie title, you have to uh, put it in italicize. You have to italicize it. When you write your APA reference citation, you have to italicize the title of the article. So that's the same thing. So titles have to be italicized. Used to be underlined. I don't know if anyone is old enough to remember back when titles used to be underlined. Then along came the internet, and then people started confusing the underlined words with links. So then APA changed it to, now you gotta italicize instead of underline. Anybody old enough to remember when you just underline all of the titles? No, okay, so I'm the only old one. Anyway, so you always put italics, not underlining, around titles. I saw a movie named Gone with the Wind. Everybody's seen Gone with the Wind. Have you seen Gone with the Wind? Okay, well these days, yeah. these days, it's, um, I forget who it was, it's considered a bit racist, Gone with the Wind, but it was a classic back in 1939. Can you believe it was that long ago? So Gone with the Wind um, is a t movie title, so we italicize it. So incorrect, I saw a movie named Gone with the Wind. So this is incorrect because it hasn't been italicized. What is wrong with these sentences? Emily Blunt's character in The Devil Wears Pe Prada explains, I'm just one stomach flew away from my goal weight. And so here, The Devil Wears Prada is the name of a movie. And because it hasn't been italicized, then that means this is not correct. How many of you saw The Devil Wears Prada? That was a Meryl Streep movie from the 80s, I think. 
Nope, nobody. Well, anyway, Prada is uh, very fancy clothing. That uh, uh, it's a fashion designer, and if you've got a gazillion dollars, you can afford to buy Prada clothes. So anyway, all you got to remember is that the name of a movie you have to have it italicized. So correct, and then you have to have a beginning quotation mark and an ending quotation mark. So now you not only have to look at your quote, make sure you got quotation marks. You're going to make sure that whatever title is italicized. So that means that when they have A, B, and C, you've got to look very closely to make sure everything is correct. That's the challenge for this particular quiz, is you've got to have sharp eyes. And so, and the movie, The Devil Wears Prada was actually a pretty good movie. Uh, Meryl Streep, um, you know, someone once told Meryl Streep, uh, after she came out of an audition, they told her that she would make it a terrible actress. But then, but then she, he was wrong. So never let anybody tell you Otherwise, if you think you can do it, you can do it. And that was what Mer Meryl Streep thought. I can do it. I'm not going to listen to all the negative people. There was an article about that. Anyway, Emily Blunt, this is an actual quiz question. Emily Blunt's character in The Devil Wears Prada explains, I'm just one stomach flew away from an ideal weight. So which one of these are correct? Is it A, B, C, D, or none of the above? None, None of the above. above. None of the above. Why is that? Why is A incorrect? Because the devil wears Prada should be italicized. Italicized. Yeah. So in all of these, the uh, and also you were missing quotation marks, but that wasn't as, as important. So that is the correct. That's the correct answer. So everybody got it so far. Did anybody just come on at one thirty? Did anybody just come on at one thirty? Do you need me to I go? Did. Oh, you did? Who's I did? Latoya. Latoya. Okay. So I will now, I warned you, Tamisha, Chantel, and the others, I do have to go over it again if somebody comes in at 1.30. So no, oh, yeah, that happened at my other class, at my other school. When I said, oh, well, so-and-so came in at, at such and such a time, now i got to do it over again. And I didn't warn them, so everybody went, oh, but this time I remember to remind everybody other schools so you, I learned from my mistakes so anyway week five quiz uh, Chantel what is the week five quiz you're gonna tell Latoya what she missed what what <laughs> is what is the week five quiz about um, the week five quiz is about um, knowing when to italicize um, okay what, what else? What's in the question? <laughs> okay, April, what else? You got you to know what, I'll go over it in a second. What, what else, April, what else do you have to know besides italicized titles? That's one of them. What's the second one? Underlining? There's no underlining. The title as well? No, you used, we used to underline the title, but then now we italicize it because in the old days when we used to underline things, that used to mean that's a title. Now people look at something underlined and think it's a link, and they're going to try linking on it, nothing happens. So that's why APA changed it to italicized. So that way people aren't going to try to keep linking on it and going, hey, teacher, it's not working. Well, of course not, it's just a title. So that's why they made it italic. So use italics. So basically, you're going to be studying um, quote, uh, punctuation. Use quotation marks around dialogue. You need a beginning and ending quotation mark around dialogue. What is a quotation mark? This is a quotation mark. So whenever someone is talking, whenever you use a direct quote, what does a direct quote mean, Tamisha? What's a direct quote? I said it already, just to see if people remember. Hassan, what is a direct quote? Okay, nobody remembers. It means that you 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 say it and you don't well, take another person's words. Is that yes? When you, um, okay. Yes, yes. When you quote someone word per word, so so you have to use quotation marks. And so quotation mark, you have to have a beginning quotation mark, and you have to have an ending quotation mark here. And so if the sentence does not have it both in the sentence, this is wrong because this is missing a end ending quotation mark. This sentence is wrong because it's missing a beginning quotation mark. Correct is you have to have a beginning quotation mark and an ending quotation mark. Then your quiz question would be, is this a correct or incorrect sentence? Is there a missing quotation mark? And so which one is the correct sentence? C, because this one is missing a quotation mark here. This one is missing a quotation mark there, making A and B incorrect. 
C is correct because you have a beginning quotation mark here and you have an ending quotation mark here. So the correct answer is C. So whenever you see dialogue, then you have to know you got to have a beginning quotation mark and an ending quotation mark. And so on the quiz, watch out for incomplete quotation marks. There are a lot of quiz questions just like this. And you have to have, and this is an exact, so in Jason Bourne, um, Nikki tells Jason, remembering everything doesn't mean you know everything. And so they're missing the end quotation mark, this is wrong. In this one, you're missing the beginning quotation mark over here. So this one is wrong. This one's correct because you have a beginning quotation mark and an ending quotation mark. So whenever you have a dialogue, where, like someone is saying something, you have to have beginning quotation mark, ending quotation mark. My dad's favorite saying is, don't pull tomorrow's cloud over today's sunshine. Where is the missing quotation mark? It's missing a beginning quotation mark before the word don't. Therefore, the, this is the correct answer. You would write before don't. And then when you have a title, you have to italicize it. So a beautiful mind, gone with the wind. So use italics around uh, titles. If I just simply say, I saw a movie named Gone with the Wind, there's no it italics here. It's incorrect. Then you have Devil Wears Prada. No italics here. It's incorrect. But this one is correct because I italicized the title. And so the movie title, movie titles, article titles, magazine titles, book titles, any kind of title needs italics. Everybody get that? All right. And so here, all of these were wrong because all of these uh, movie titles are not italicized. So which of these sentences are correct? None of the above. So that goes for the grammar rule above. Did I go through it too fast? No. Okay. So everybody good? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to take that to me. I'm going to go ahead. Singular versus plural subject. This is a different chapter in your book. Every time I finish something, that means this is another chapter in your book. What is a plural subject? So this comes from week one. So a plural subject means that you have more than one coat. And so when you have a plural subject, you have a plural verb. When you have a singular subject, like one coat, you have a singular verb. Is this a singular or plural subject? Books. So books is a plural subject because it's got an S at the end of it, and it's taking a plural verb. And so when you have a singular subject, you have a singular verb. And so this is known as, uh, what, what, what is this known as? We studied this last week. Subject blank agreement. Verb subject verb agreement, yes. So when you have more than one subject, you have to make it a plural, you know, plural subject. The coats were, the coat was. So that's it. That's it for plural and plural and singular subjects. This is review. Everybody got that? Good. That should go faster. Capitalization. So we capitalize famous names and titles and we capitalize proper nouns. What is a proper noun? We did this in week one when I went over the three different kinds of nouns. Chantal, what is a proper noun? What's a proper noun? Uh, a proper noun is... Um, is without looking at one's notes. Just remembering it off the top of your head. I think that... Um, I don't know if it's a person thing. Right, um, that's a common noun. A common noun is right. a person, place, so, or thing. <laughs> A proper noun is... It's a, it's a kind of noun. Mm -hmm. What kind of noun? What does it do? Anybody else want to help her out? It's like a name. Yes, exactly. Oh, yes, country. Yes, exactly. Any kind of title or name is a proper yeah. noun. So here you have... Uh, Nationality is a proper noun, so you've got to capitalize French people, countries. So nationalities and countries all have to be capitalized because it's a proper noun. Someone's name, Uncle Bob, also needs to be capitalized. Name of a country needs to be capitalized. So Uncle Bob lives in Kansas. That's wrong because here it's, not, it's a small b and a small k. So correct, you've got to have a big u and big k. And so here, President Lincoln is the 16th U.S. president. 
That's yeah. wrong because President Lincoln is a title. That's someone's title, mm -hmm. and you have to capitalize it. 16th U.S. President also has to be titled. Just like if oh. I were to say registered mm -hmm. nurse has to be, uh, you know, you got to capitalize that because that's a title. You don't just mm -hmm. say, um, so any kind of title. My uncle lives in Kansas. Why is this not capitalized? Why is that correct? That's it's not, not a name. name. It's not a name. It's not Uncle Bob or King George or oh, did you know that the King um, King King what is, what, the King of of uh, England is going to be coronated this Saturday? This yeah, Charles. King yes, King Charles. His mother uh, did not <clears throat> want him to be king because Elizabeth thought that he that King Charles was so not uh, worthy of it. Anyway. I like to drive, and you need to capitalize I. I'm going to watch the coronation, but I know someone who thinks that's like such a waste of money and time. And anyway, a slightly more peaceful France was restored when Napoleon Bonaparte rose to power in 1799. This is correct, because you have France is capitalized, and Napoleon Bonaparte is capitalized. The grandchildren show great respect for Grandma Janet, and so Grandma Janet is capitalized, so this is correct. So someone needs to, to, to mute that. Okay. My grandma was great. Her name was Grandma Nai Nai. That's how, that's how you say grandma in Chinese. And so that's capitalized. So capital, capitalized names like Grandma Janet. What is wrong with these sentences? I love my Uncle Bob because he always makes me laugh. So what's wrong with that sentence? April. And so here, yeah, go ahead. Uncle um, Bob. Uncle Bob. Right, and you need to capitalize what? Uncle. Yeah, you need to capitalize uncle. Uh, and when I miss the bus, uh, Donald, what needs to be uh, capitalized? So you got uh, all, the eyes. all the eyes. You'd be surprised. I still have students who still write like this in the forums. And then when I tell them to capitalize it, they don't understand what I'm talking about. So basically, I had to teach a whole lesson on what is a, what is a capital letter and what is a small letter. So yes, I had a grown student who didn't know what that was. You always capitalize names of countries and names of famous people. And so in your opinion, which sentence shows proper capitalization? Is it A, B? Okay, it's only A or B. Uh huh. Oh, okay. A, B. Um, so is this correct? Is A or B correct? Or neither? What is wrong with A? Yeah, that baby had the right idea. That's a wrong answer. <laughs> so, uh, what is wrong with A? Does Does emperor, emperor? Emperor? Yeah, emperor needs to be uh, capitalized. What's wrong with B? French should be, French should be capitalized. And also notice how it's got a red thing here. This means that I've got my Microsoft grammar on. And whenever the Microsoft grammar underlines something like this, it means you've got to fix it. So if you've got your grammar on, you know. So in your opinion, which sentence shows proper capitalization? A, B, C or none of the above? Hassan. Yes, it's, it's, it's the only way I can really like talk. Oh, okay, so Donald, yeah. um, which, one, which one is correct or none of the above? No. If you're stumped, then Josie can help you out, right? And it, it looks, looks like, like um, none, none of the above. Yes, none of the above. None of the above. Mainly because in, in the quiz you're not going to see these very helpful red things. But anyway, French needs to be capitalized. Russia needs to be capitalized. And here, French needs to be capitalized. Emperor and emperor. So none of the above. So that's an actual quiz question. What is wrong with these sentences? President Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. Uh, Tamisha, what's wrong with this sentence? I think I did this already. Didn't we already do this? 
Yeah, I think I did. Because we did, did do one, one like, like that. that. Yeah, the president, president is not Yeah, so, so right, we did this already. So President Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. So this is the correct answer. These are all uh, the quizzes attempt to confuse you. So let's go into comma usage and the dependent clause. So what is a dependent clause? A dependent clause, any, anybody already know what a dependent clause is? Okay. I don't. Yeah? So what, what is the dependent clause? I said I don't. Oh, oh okay, okay. So <laughs> I, I thought you said I do. A dependent clause means that it, it cannot stand alone. It means that when you, when, if I say, when I go out shopping, is that a complete thought? If I simply no. say, no, because then you're waiting for the rest of the sentence. When you go out shopping, then what? So whenever you have a dependent clause, you have an incomplete thought. If I say something like, I go shopping, is that a complete thought? Yes, yes. I yes. go shopping. So if I, when I add the word when, that's what makes it a dependent clause. So when, while, uh, what, who, uh, those are all and as, before, after. As soon as you add those particular words to a sentence, then it becomes a dependent clause. So these words that make it de dependent clause are known as a subordinating conjunction. So when I add a subordinating conjunction to an independent clause, John goes to the store and I add when to it, that makes it a dependent clause. So if you want to know what is a subordinating conjunction, you can Google yourself a list of subordinating conjunctions. And that way, you can have more sentence variety. You can connect two sentences that have the same subject, John and he. So instead of saying, John goes to the store, John wears his mask, that's boring. So you would want to combine two sentences together with a subordinating conjunction. So when John goes to the store, comma, he wears his mask. So that means that when the dependent clause comes at the beginning of the sentence, we put a comma. When the dependent clause comes at the end of the sentence, no comma here. So that's the, that's the, that's the big rule for, for comma usage. But it's different when you have adjective clauses. What is an adjective clause? What's a clause? What's the difference between a clause and a phrase? Anybody remember their elementary school grammar? fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, roughly. Nobody remembers that. Anyway, if you ask your kid, they would remember it, just like who's smarter than a fifth grader. So when you have an adjective clause, an adjective clause, a clause is a sentence with a subject and a verb. And so therefore, an adjective clause, here's an example of an adjective clause. Jack, who is French, lives in Paris. So once again, you have two sentences with the same subject. Jack is French. Jack lives in Paris. So if you have two sentences with the same subject, you can combine them together, just like you do up here. And so here, Jack, here's a comma, who is French, there's another comma, lives in Paris. So here, who is French acts like, is a clause that acts like an adjective because who is French, who are we talking about? Talking about Jack. Yeah. Jack is a noun, and therefore anything that modifies a noun is an adjective, okay? And it's a clause because you have a subject who, you have a verb is. So together, this is a clause that acts like an adjective. And therefore, when you have an adjective clause in the beginning of the sentence, you have two commas. When the adjective clause is at the, oh, this is also at the beginning of the sentence. And then when the adjective clause is at the end of the sentence, you only have one comma, which I don't seem to have uh, the, ta the antique table, which is antique, is made of wood. Uh, oh, the, the table made of wood, wood um, is antique. No, that's still got two of them. I can't, I can't think of one in which, but when you have the same thing um, at the end, it has two, two, one, one, one comma when, when the dependent clause comes at the end, it, it has one comma, and when this kind of adjective clause comes at the beginning, it has two commas. I think I have other uh, here, um, but you'll see in, in a moment. So, I walk the dog. This is an independent clause. I chew gum while I walk the dog. So, this is known as a complex sentence. A complex sentence has an independent clause 
plus a dependent clause. And so when you have a complex sentence and you have the dependent clause at the end of the sentence, then you have no comma. And then when the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence, you have a comma. So that's so far what, what you've learned. Use a comma after a deep, so while I chew gum, I walk my dog. So that's a, that's a complex sentence. Since I became a nurse, I feel fulfilled. So here you have a comma. The dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence. While I was growing up, comma, I always wanted to be a nurse. So you have the comma because the dependent clause is at the end of the, is at the beginning of the sentence. Then you can get rid of I was. You can say while growing up, I always wanted to be a, a nurse. And so this also has a comma at the beginning of the sentence. And then you can get rid of while and just go growing up, I always wanted to be a sentence. So all three of these, while I was growing up, while, while growing up, and growing up, all mean the same exact thing. They're all dependent clauses that come at the beginning of the sentence and need a comma. Okay, so the, you, this is just a shortened way. When you say growing up, I always wanted to be a nurse, that's a short way of saying while I was growing up. Okay, these are all ways in which you can shorten this. These are known as reduced adjective clauses. If you want to Google that, there's, there's, there's reams of, uh, but that's all you need to know. So these are all reduced adjective clauses or reduced relative clauses. So as a nurse, I have a job with benefits. So when you have an introductory phrase, at the beginning of a sentence. A phrase is a group of words with no uh, subject and verb. So when you have an introductory phrase, you also need a comma. And so here, this is correct. When I walk the dog, I chew gum. But this is incorrect because I have, when I walk the dog, I chew gum, and it's missing a comma here. So that is what your uh, quiz will be about. I chew gum when I walk the dog. So when the dependent clause is at the end of the sentence, you do not need a comma. And so no comma needed. I chew gum when I walk the dog. Here you have it correct. Although John is fat, here you have the dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence, but then you have to have a comma. And so remember, this, the only exception is only when you have an adjective clause. An adjective clause is usually that, which, who, whose, who. When you have a dependent clause with any of these words, then you have to have two commas in the beginning of the sentence. So here you have two commas when it comes at the beginning of the sentence, not just one comma. And in case you want to Google that, that's known as an appositive. Okay? So everybody, everybody got it so far? Do I need to go over this again? Okay, so I, I take that to mean everyone's got it. All right, so here's your quiz question. When Karen's mother returned to college this year, the entire family had to help out with the housework. Where is the missing comma? Is it after a year? Uh, after, wow, that was my Grammarly. Okay, after a year, after college, or there are no missing commas. So what, where is the missing comma in this sentence? Anybody want to volunteer? Hey. Hey. After, year. after a year, everybody got yeah, it yeah. right. So basically, <laughs> when Karen's mother returned to college this year, comma, because that is a dependent clause, then you have your independent clause. The entire family had to help out with the housework. And when you put a dependent clause and an independent clause together, what kind of sentence is that? Is it a compound or complex sentence? Um, I think that's... Compound? No. Oh, complex? complex? It's complex, yes. And so here the answer is after year. And so I, I explain that when a dependent clause is at the beginning of a sentence, when Karen's mother returned to college this year, you put a comma. If I were to change it this, to change this around, then if it's at the end of the sentence, you don't need a comma, okay? So everybody got it so far? Oh, now I'm going to go over more about adjective clauses. Relative clauses are also known as adjective clauses. Adjective clauses modifies the noun it describes. If the adjective clause that, which, who, whose is located in the middle of the sentence, use two commas. If the relative clause is located at the end of the sentence, use one comma. And so here, here you get to see me correct something based on, uh, based on uh, what's the name of Grammarly. Yeah, I got the free version. 
So anyway, which means whenever you use which, you're referring to things. When you use that, you're referring to people, also referring to things. But the difference between which and that is that which is more formal and that is more informal. So when we're talking, we'll use that. When we're writing, we tend to use which. Because when we do our academic research paper, we always want to write in formal English. However, we always use who when referring to people. And so when we use these um, relative clauses or adjective clauses, that, which, who, and whose, then you have, to, you have two commas at the beginning. When the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence, you have two commas. And then when the dependent clause is at the end of the sentence, you have one comma. So that is different than the before when I said that when you have a dependent clause and then you have one comma and then no commas at the end. So basically this rule, there are exceptions. So the exception to the previous rule is when you have that, which, who, and whose. Then you have two commas and one comma. The cactus plant, which is sold at high prices, is rare. So the adjective clause, which is sold at high prices, and so this is a clause that acts like an adjective. What is being sold at high prices? The cactus plant. So here this entire clause modifies this noun. That's what makes it an adjective clause or an appositive. So therefore, you have a comma here before which and after the word prices. So if they ask you where would you place the commas, then the answer would be before the word which, after the word prices. That's the correct answer. So if the adjective clause is at the end of the sentence, it takes one comma. I bought a rare cactus plant, which is sold at high prices. Then you just have one comma. And so then in the, in the, in the um, quiz, if they ask you, where do we place the missing comma? You would say, after the word plant. Everybody got that? And then people have asked me, but why? And people are always, e ESL students basically will ask me, well, why is this? As if there's a re rhyme or reason for, for language. And why do we say speak, spoke, spoken? Why can't we just say speak and speak? You know, you can just blame the British for that. This is just, a lot of it is British English, at least for that one. So does everyone understand what happens with adjective and or relative clauses? What is the difference with adjective clauses, relative clauses, versus the regular dependent clause. What's the difference? Anybody want to explain that? <laughs> They're all dependent clauses. All we're talking about in this entire section, everything deals with dependent clauses, which is a sentence fragment that cannot stand alone. If you just simply have a, a sentence, when Karen's mother returned to college this year, and you just leave it like that, that's a sentence fragment. Then you're going to get points off your, your essay. Um, and so what's the difference between a regular dependent clause, like when Karen's mother returned to college, versus, uh, what was it that I used? which is sold at high prices. What's the difference between the two? Anybody want to hazard a guess? Why, why are there two sets of different rules? Can you say, say that question, question again? again? I'm sorry. Okay, what's the difference between a regular dependent clause where you have a subordinating conjunction in which you add it to an independent clause? When Karen's mother returned to college this year, and then what's the difference between that and which is sold at high prices? They're both dependent clauses, but they both act differently and used in different, different ways in the sentence. And how does that make, make it different comma rules? Adjective clauses, like, like how many are needed, are needed at, at the beginning, beginning or at the end. end. Like, like I meant two, two versus, versus one. one. Okay. So which one needs the one and which one needs the two? Uh, I think you said it correctly, but you said it so fast, I, I couldn't understand. Uh, <laughs> so, so, and the Zoom doesn't always have good audio either. That's why people don't sing on Zoom. During, during the pandemic, people were trying to sing their choir <laughs> songs on Zoom. It didn't come out right. But anyway, uh, go, go ahead. What, try to explain that again. <laughs> Yeah, it says so right there. Adjective clauses. 
is when Karen's mother returned to college this year. Is that an adjective clause? Yes or no? When Karen's mother returned to college this year. Is that an adjective clause? Mm. No, no, no. So no. that's just a, de a regular dependent clause. That is not an adjective clause because we're not modifying no, any. No, no, we're no, not no, modifying no. Uh, which is sold at uh, high prices. Here we're modifying the noun, the cactus plant. Then, as soon mm -hmm. as you're modifying, as soon as the dependent clause is modifying a noun, then you have to have two commas in at the beginning of the sentence, and then one comma at the end of the sentence. And if the dependent clause is not modifying a noun, and it's just an it's just a sentence fragment. Then you just have one comma at the beginning of the at the beginning of the sentence. If the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence, and then no comma when the dependent clause is at the end of the sentence. So this particular two sentence one sentence comma rule only goes with adjective clauses, and only when you see the words that, which, who, and whose. All other like all other subordinating conjunctions like when after as it does it doesn't apply does that make sense yeah okay so I'm going to skip this I'm going to go to um, here so when you have a relative clause a relative clause is the same thing as an adjective clause different grammar books call it different names so you've got different grammar some grammar books will call it adjective clauses some will call it relative clauses some will call it restrictive and non-restrictive clauses and some will call it appositives. So when you Google this particular grammar point, or if you read your Langan book, they will have different terminology expressing the same thing. That I don't know why someone did that. Why not just have one name for everything? That would be so much easier. So large cactus plants, this is your actual, which now sell for very high prices, are being stolen from national parks and protected areas. So this is your, your quiz question. Where do we place the missing comma? A, B, C, or D? Where do we place the missing commas? First you have to ask yourself, is this a regular dependent clause or is this an adjective clause? So everybody, so, so Donald, is this a regular dependent clause or is this an a, 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 um, a, a adjective clause? April? Jasmine? A. A. Yeah, A. After, yeah, after plants, she just jumped, she jumped and got to the answer. Okay. Yes, this is an adjective clause, and therefore you have to have your um, comma after the word plants and after the word prices, because which now sell for very high prices is a uh, adjective clause that modifies large cactus plants. Excellent. So that's excellent. Uh, the demonstrators protesting nuclear arms uh, carried. Uh, try it that way. Okay, the demonstrators carry uh, ca protesting nuclear arms carried signs reading: "Humans have never invented a weapon that which they haven't used." Where is there a missing comma? There are none. Well, I corrected it for the previous class and forgot to take it away. So <laughs> yeah, after weapon. So yeah, uh, forgot to, 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 to do that. So here you have that and which they haven't used. So this is an adjective clause. So when the adjective clause comes at the end of the sentence, then you have one comma. It usually comes before which, okay? So and after a weapon. And so if you, you notice how I do this? add an article. This is known as Grammarly, the free version. So if you get Grammarly, the free version, it will help you with your grammar. It will make, a, uh, it will make suggestions on what you should do to make this more correct. So if you want, you can get the free version. Um, anyway, so why is B the correct answer? That it's because it is an adjective clause. So here, um, that's it for this one. So that is used in, okay. So everybody got that before I move on to something else? Okay, more comma usage. So when we have a, uh, after, when you have a compound sentence and you have for and nor, but, or, yet, so, and when these, 
com coordinating conjunctions combine <coughs> two sentences together. That's known as a compound sentence. So a compound, the word compound simply means two. John is smart, that's one sentence, comma, but Mary is stupid. We always use a comma before fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. So here you put a comma before but, you put a, put a comma before for, and another, another word for for is because. For in this case means because. This is very British English, and as you can see, correct word choice for American English would be because, okay? So my Grammarly is trying to tell me, don't use for, okay? Use because, that's more American. Okay, so how many of you have, have Grammarly? Nobody? It's free. So it, it, it'll, hover, it'll hover over a word, and when you hover over it, it will correct your English. Okay, so anyway, so whenever you have fanboys, you have to have a comma before fanboys. Steve eats very little, yet he is um, overweight. John eats dinner at Steve's house, and he loves to play the piano. And so here, you can have John eats dinner. You can have a, uh, see how, how Grammarly will say, well, you know, you could use a comma, or you could have a semicolon. So once again, uh, Grammar Grammarly will then give you more proper English or something like that. But then there's a whole grammar lesson on the verb loves can take either to play or playing. So we don't want to get to, uh, to since that's not on the quiz, I'm not going to go over it. All you need to know for the quiz is you got to have a comma when you, uh, before the, the coordinating conjunction. Jo Mary is tall, comma, but John is short. John is fat, but he eats very little. And then if we use transition words of opposition, so in your essay, instead of saying but, 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 but all the time, you can use transition words of opposition, like however, moreover, on the other hand. And so here, if you're going to use transition words, then you have to have slightly different punctuation. So with a transition word, another word, another way of saying but is however. John is fat, period, however, comma, he eats very little. So we always have a comma after a transition word. And so you can either have the, the period or you could have a semicolon. Semicolon is another way of saying and. That's what semicolon, when you have a semicolon between sentences, it's a shortcut for and. So John is short and, however, a comma, he eats very little. So these are all different ways in which you can say but. Here, quiz question. I'd left my a wallet on the store counter, but the clerk called me at home to say that it was safe. Where is there a missing comma? Anybody? After the counter. counter? After counter, correct. After After counter. Counter. Yeah. I had left my wallet, so here the quiz B, okay? So after counter. So the answer is after counter because you always need a comma before a coordinating conjunction. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. And an easy way of remembering that is simply fanboys. So before I go on to everybody get that? Good. So now we're going to do contractions. So contractions are used mainly in written, I mean, mainly in spoken English. And if we're going to use contractions in writing, we have to write out our contractions in order to have more formal English. So here, contraction is I'm, I am, he's, he is, she's, she is, there, they are, we're, we are, you're, you are, it's, it is. And then you cannot say X, it's a Let's see if I do something like this. You cannot say, it's a nice day. You have to say, it is a nice day. The dog wagged its tail. So here you have a possessive pronoun. So a possessive pronoun, his, hers. His, hers, 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 hers. Okay. His, hers, yours, theirs, its. Those are all possessive pronouns. So you have to say, the dog wagged its tail. And no, this would make it wrong. You were to put in, why is that wrong? Why is that incorrect? Anybody? Why is oh, that no. incorrect? Because, because it's, it's right, right there, there means, means it, it is. is. Right, so it would make, no, it would make, the, the it would make no sense if you say the dog wag it is tail. Okay, this is a common mistake in people's um, essays that I see. So here, see how Grammarly? Uh, corrects it, the dog wag 
its tail. That's how Grammarly works. So if you want to get your free version, be my guest. So here you have your, your, you are, and people confuse it with your. So your or you are crazy to go into the seawater in the winter time. See, and it also corrects you. It should be like this: seawater into the seawater. You're crazy to go into the seawater in the winter time. Okay, so your is incorrect. See, and it also replaced the word for you are. Your wallet is filled with money, so it should be, and you cannot say you are wallet is filled with money. It should be you, your wallet is filled with money. Everybody, this is, this is usually, if you're a native speaker, you, it, it just sounds right. But the, what confuses people is because it has the exact same pronunciation. So anybody, anybody need more review on this? No, okay. Oh, there's more, a little bit more. I am sure you're, you're going to think I am crazy. And so here the correct answer is you are. You cannot say your stands, okay? This is correct. You're standing for who you are. So here you can't, if he understands the circumstances, what is the correct, what is the correct word? Is it he's or he'll? Is it he's or he'll? He'll. 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 He will make the correct choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will make put this for the future class. He's, oops, heel. Okay, he'll make the correct choice. So heel is a co contraction that means he will. Everybody got that? Now we're going to go on to numbers. This is the last. This is the last thing for the for, for this quiz. When to spell out numbers? Everybody good? Good. Okay. So if if you have a, a long number, okay, uh, like here, spell out numbers that are fewer than three words. Spell out numbers under 10. So if, you, if, if the number is under three words, like 57 is two words, so then you're going to write out 57. Five is under two words, so you're going to write out five. But however, if it's more than two words, 1,232, for instance, then we're going to write the actual number, 1,202, uh, no, 1, something like that. So when you have, when it's long and it, it, it's, it's got lots of words, more than two words, then we write out the number, okay? 129 is also, um, well, yeah, you got to add a, a hyphen. But anyway, 100. So write out the numbers that are big and then um, spell out the numbers that are small. So small numbers, anything 1 to 10, anything less than two words. Then you just write out the number 57. And here you, you got to write in 57. Well, oh, Grammarly is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, so 29, 129. John has five shoes. And so um, spell out numbers under 10. Does everybody understand, you know, all of this? If you have more than two words, you just write it out. And then if you have more than two words, you just write out the number. So you use numbers like this if it's more than three words. Everybody got it? Good. Yes. So I will think, I have 72 shoes. So I have 72 shoes. So which one is correct? Is I have 72 shoes or I have or I have 72 shoes? A or B? B. 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 Yeah, because it's spell it out if it's less than 3 words. We will have we will have the report for you in 72 hours. And that's the same thing. We would write out uh, can be written as 72. And so um, always but however Use numbers to show dates, times, addresses, percentages, and chapters of books. Chapter 2, October 31st, 1000 Bateman Avenue, or 45%. So you do write out the numbers if you're using it in your in-text citation. So uh, select which sentence contains uh, the correct use of numbers. Okay, we'll have a report for you in 72 hours. Correct. She has $1,345. Is this correct or incorrect? Incorrect. incorrect. 
Oh, but that's, it's that's correct. correct. That's correct because it's if it's long or it's a big number, you oh, write oh, you, yeah, you, yeah, you write exactly. three. So so then you have to then this is wrong. If you were to write right, three, right. three thousand and forty five forty five dollars, and so more than three words, you write the number. Less than three words, uh, you spell it. You spell it out. Okay. So uh, everybody got that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Only standard abbreviations are used in academic writing, like USA. If it is not standard, standard means commonplace, everybody knows what it is. Then spell it out for clarity, TESOL, teaching English as a second language. So whenever you use abbreviations um, in your paper, the first time you use the abbreviation in your paper, you should spell it out. Then the rest of the paper, you don't have to spell it out. Okay, so if I were to say TESOL, 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 all of you are not, you're not, you're not ESL teachers, so you're going to go, yeah. what is TESOL? It's just like when I first started this job and I had to read everyone's introduction. Everybody wrote, I'm a CN, going to be an RN, but then someday I'm going to get my BSN. And I had to go, what is an RN? What is a CN? Or someone would say, I'm, I am a... Um, whatever they're doing right now, and then they're going to be whatever they want to be, and then all of these, because I'm not a nurse, so in the very beginning of this job, I had to try to figure out what all those abbreviations mean. Also, when people wrote about, I want to become a nurse, essay, same thing, alphabet soup. So that's why when you use the abbreviation for the first time, you would write it out, spell it out. Don't assume that the reader knows what it means. And then afterwards, you, after you spell it out the first time, then the rest of the paper, you can write TESOL, TESOL, TESOL. Just like if I say the NNS uses language with more slang, but the um, NS uses language with less slang. Do you know what NNS and NS refers to? If you're not a no, linguist, no. you'll have a what? NNS stands for non-native speakers and NS stands for native speakers. Now some ESL students might know that, but outside of that, and linguists, and outside of that you're gonna go, huh? Like that. So only stand, and also only standard abbreviation should be used in academic writing. No text messaging. You can't say LOL. And yes, I've had students write U, as in the letter U. You must uh, become a nurse so that you, the letter U, have more opportunities. And I remember telling an eighth grader, I asked an eighth grader, how do you spell the, the word you? And then he, and go up on the board and write that down, write the whole sentence. And he wrote the letter U, you know? He kept insisting that was the case. And then his second grade sister, who happened to be there, saying, that's not the right way. My teacher says you spell you Y-O-U. And so the second grade, his second grade sister was right, while the eighth grade, the brother, was embarrassed in front of the whole school. Uh, this was an after school. And um, it was just hilarious. All the other students laughed because the little girl, she was so short, got it right, while the big brother got it wrong. Anyway, so only standard abbreviations should be used in academic writing. If it is not standard, then spell out the word and phrase for clarity. So that is true. So that you're gonna have a true and false question. So never assume the reader knows what your abbreviation means. USC is great. Do you know what USC means if you're not local to Los Angeles? It's University of Southern California. It's not University of Southern Carolina. So if you're from the South, USC can mean University of Southern Carolina. So always write it out. You are good. This is not correct English. So you have to write out you are good. I actually had to argue with it. Well, anyway, which sentence contains incorrect abbreviations. I will text you the directs to my house later today. So this is not, uh, this is incorrect because this is all text messaging. So we do not use text messaging spelling in our papers. It is not correct English. Do these sentences have correct abbreviations? The FBI distributes a most wanted list. My psychology course is taught by Dr. Kathleen PhD. And yeah, according to this, it's correct, okay? So FBI means, what does FBI stand for? This everybody should know. Anybody? Federal, Federal Investigation. Yeah, it's a great TV program, yeah, FBI. So everybody knows. So since this is standard, then, um, you know, that's correct. So here, you're ready for your week five practice test? If you get 100%, you could go take your week five quiz. Are you ready? Yeah, it's, this is the fun part anyway. So I don't have to do as much talking. 
Large cactus plants, which now sell for very high prices, are being stolen from national parks and protected desert areas. Where is there a missing comma? After, After plants. plants. A. A. After plants. Uh-huh. And, oh, we're, oh, and, and, and prices. And prices. Yes. And prices. <laughs> Remember, it's an adjective clause. Yeah. Which sentence contains incorrect abbreviations? C. C. Okay. Pick the sentence that puts the quotation marks in the in the proper place. So is A correct? Yes or no? No. 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 What about what about B and C? C, C, C is correct. B is correct. B is correct. Yes, because B has a beginning quotation mark, an ending quotation mark, and it italicized the title. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number four is the easiest. What's what's the correct answer? A. 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 Yes. Select from the following sentences. Which one shows proper capitalization? A, B, or C? C. 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 So uh, only standard abbreviations should be used in academic writing. If it is not standard, then spell out the word or phrase for clarity. True or false? True. 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 My favorite dad saying is don't pull tomorrow's cloud over today's sunshine. Where is the missing quotation mark? Before, Before don't. don't. Before don't. Before, before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Choose the correct sentence. I can't seem to find the keys. This is the first time you weren't late. If you aren't going to make it, please call. C. So choose the sentence that puts the quotation marks in the proper place. So which one is the cor is correct answer? C? C, yes, because mm -hmm. C has a beginning quotation mark and an ending quotation mark. Oh, okay. And also, when you take your quiz, this, yeah, is, yeah, this yeah. is all going to be mixed up. Yeah. C could actually be A or B. So basically, they mix it up so you don't memorize. <clears throat> so just because it's C on the practice test doesn't mean it's going to be C on your quiz. <laughs> but you just have to remember that it has a beginning quotation mark and an ending quotation mark. It makes life more interesting when they do it that way. Which one shows proper capitalization? A. 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 Yes, A. 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 because you have France, you have Napoleon Bonaparte, and everything is capitalized. Here, they forgot to, France is not capitalized. And here, A, the first letter, the first letter in the word, the first <laughs> word in a sentence. Which one contains the correct use of numbers? B. 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 It took us five weeks to find an apartment we liked. Okay. Select the sentence that puts quotation marks in the correct, in the proper place. Which of these sentences are correct? None of the above. None of the above. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody doesn't have uh, italicize the devil wears Prada. Which sentence shows proper capitalization? C. 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 President Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. 14. When Karen's mother returned to college this year, the entire family had to help out with the housework. Where is there a missing comma? A. 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 After year. So when the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence, we use a comma. I had left my wallet on the store counter, but the clerk called me at home to say that it was safe. Where is there a missing comma? After counter. After counter, after after counter. counter and before the coordinating conjunction. But if he understands the circumstances, blank, make the correct choice. Choose the correct word to complete the sentence. B. 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 Excellent. The demonstrators protesting nuclear arms carried signs reading, humans have never invented a weapon that they haven't used. Where is there a missing comma? 
B. 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 Okay. In your opinion, which sentences show proper uh, punctuation, uh, capitalization? B. B. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> Yeah, this no, 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 not the above. None of the above. None of the above. Notice how, how uh, Grammarly actually corrects it for you. I don't even have to talk about it. I just go, hey, Grammarly, you know? So here, if you want Grammarly, you can, so none of the above, right. Find a truly original idea. It is the only way I will distinguish myself. Uh, it's the only way I will ever matter. John Mo Nash moans in a beautiful uh, mind. So which of these are correct? None of the above. Let me see. None of, it seems like that number, this one, this one. Yeah, because a beautiful mm -hmm. mind is not italicized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of the above. No. Okay, that's it. So that means that if you got all the correct answers, then you're ready to take the quiz. Anybody want to do it again? No. Okay, so that means this is almost done. And then um, your peer review, this is, has not been corrected. So your peer review forum in week four, your week four forum, you're going to, um, now you can tell this from the old class, your week four forum means that you're just going to write out your rough draft. Any kind of rough draft, and I believe that's it. Yeah. So any kind of rough draft um, you, that you have for the week four. So you could do a mind map. You can write me the, you can actually write out the whole thing. And then you can write, so whatever rough draft you have, the only difference between um, the week two, week four, and week five, which is all the same thing, is only in week six where everything's got to be perfect. There you've got to have double space. Then you've got to have it in, you know, indent five spaces, the first line of every paragraph. But as long as you're using the forums, you don't have to worry about the double spacing. You don't have to worry about the indent the first line and all that kind of stuff because the forums are not capable of doing that, those functions. It's only when you hand in your final draft that you have to double space it. You've got to have Times New Roman size 12, and then everything's got to be the same font, and then you've got to have, you got to indent the first line of every paragraph. So that's basically for your final draft. You've got to have your APA formatting correct. Uh, does anyone have any questions about their essay one, week four, five, or um, the forums? Because if, if, if not, if we're good to go, correct. Yes, you may. So if you don't have any questions, you can say, see you next week, Professor H. So you could stay if you I want. Have, I have a question. Okay, only, have a question. only the people who have questions stay. If you don't have any questions, you could just say, you can just go, okay, I'll see you next week. So right now, see next week. Week. so I'll see you next week for all of those who are satisfied and everyone can go. And anyone who has a question can stay. Only if you have a question, you can stay. Or you just want to listen in and learn more. That's up to you. Okay, who was the first one to say I had a question? That's how I'm going to do it. I guess I have to decide. I think it was Asia who said that she had a question. So everybody, everybody can go. Oh, anybody. They can do what they need. What they need for, for. Oh, okay, you want to be definitely the only one. Okay, so yeah, everybody yes. else, who's the only other person who had a question? I think I, think I, well, I, I know I have a question. Okay, what's your so question? Are so, are we so, so are we supposed to, to um, um, send, a send a PDF of, of our essay, essay to, to the, the group? And then everyone's everyone supposed, supposed to read it? And then, it and then, and then yes. Yes. Okay, okay, so, okay, not, so just, not just... Well, you can, cut, um, you can cut and paste it. You can just... It's easier for you not... You don't have to attach it to the forum. Just cut and paste it and cut and paste it right into the search box, whatever it was you wrote. Don't worry about APA when we're doing the forums. Your APA only becomes like matters is when you hand in your week six final final draft. That's why we okay, call it. Okay, because I was confused. I, was confused to, to, I, I know I did, I know the, I did first the first part of, of like brainstorming, brainstorming or whatever. Mm -hmm. I did that part. I didn't, I didn't know, know like if I was supposed, supposed to upload, upload my, my essay, essay as, well. as well. Okay, that would be more like week five. So week four, you can just do part, part of your essay. Week four is more like an outline. And then week five, you're going to have all five paragraphs uploaded. So that would be the slight difference between week four and week five. Does, does that answer okay, everybody's okay. question between the, the difference? Oh, oh, to piggyback, to piggyback also, also, also on Chantel. Chantel. So, we're so we're posting it where we've been posting everything, everything else, else so far. far. Uh-huh. We're posting it in the okay, okay. Yes. 
Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. For, for weeks, so I, think, I think it's two steps, steps right? right? I think, I think it's, it was two that we had to upload for this for, this, for week. this week. Yeah, this week, uh, week four, yes. Week four, you have a week four rough draft assignment. So that's where you're going to p upload your entire five paragraphs. And then the week four forum, just put in your, your whatever it is. In other words, week four forum is very flexible, whatever you want. But the week four rough draft, you've got to have your double spacing. You've got to indent five spaces for the first, for the first, first, the first line. So yes, week four has two assignments, week four forum, and then the week four rough draft assignment. Does that make okay, sense? Okay. And the rough draft assignment is, is something that you upload as a doc, uh, DOCX, or PDF. You cannot upload pages. So if you have a Mac, you have to remember to put it into put it into DOCX or PDF. Otherwise, the classroom is not going to recognize it. I don't know why the, everything is biased towards towards Microsoft, but that's what it is. It's not it's not it's not Mac friendly. Uh, the the everything. So basically, that's it. Any other questions? So oh, week thank four, you. week thank four, you. two things. Week four forum. And then week four rough draft. And do those, and do those have, to have to be put up um, by, by Wednesday, by today, by today okay. or by Sunday? So the forum, the first post, you have to do it by Wednesday. Why? So that way students have time to peer review what you posted uh, from Wednesday to Sunday. So the earlier you post, the more people have the time to comment on your rough draft. If you post on Sunday, no one's going to have time to look at, except for me anyway. And then, then you have to do everything. So, so basically, that's why you, you have to do everything by Wednesday. So people have time from Wednesday to Sunday to post, to post uh, their peer review comments. And then, if, of course, if you want to know what a peer review comments was, you could go back to last week's um, Zoom session and look at it. And I think I also uh, update, uh, gave you the lecture notes. You got to remind me this week. I got to give you a week this this week's lecture notes because it's got the week five prep for and week five quiz is next week. So that's what we went over today was to prep for next week. Any other questions? Okay, several people left, so that means we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Any any other questions, Chantel, Jasmine? No, I think, no, I I'm, think I'm good. Good. With, I just have I just to. Have to um, um, Post, post my, my essay, essay, my rough draft, because, because I just did the first part, part. That's that's what, that was the day, day. I, didn't I didn't know oh, the essay, oh, the, essay was Actually, the rough draft is due Sunday. Your rough draft is due See, that's what's so confusing. You yeah, that's yeah, that's how I didn't know. <laughs> that's everything in the, in the forum. You have two, every time you have a forum, you have two deadlines. It's Wednesday and Sunday. Wednesday right, for right. the first post, Sunday to post to two students. Every time you have a writing assignment, that's always due Sunday of that week, midnight, for all the writing assignments. And, I, and I'm guessing for all your classes, that goes as well, once you learn that universal rule. Okay. okay. So, that, that, so this week, uh, and after you uh, post, so do your forum first, and then I will give you the feedback, I will tell you what's wrong. You can even post all five paragraphs if you want, then I will give you feedback, and then for the week four rough draft, then you include all those errors or whatever the feedback, I tell you to redo it or whatever, and then you put that into your week four rough draft. And then in week five, you're gonna post it again, the corrected whatever it was that you posted in week four, then I'm gonna correct it again, and then by week six, it's gonna be perfect. That's how it works. Everybody got okay, that? It's okay. called the writing process. Each draft is better than the last. Did you know that Ernest Hemingway corrected his each chapter of his book 29 times? He was a perfectionist. So if you think that all of this is overkill, you should look at Ernest Hemingway. That's why he, his books like The Old Man and the Sea are classics. You would have learned that in high school, I'm guessing. Most people do, do learn that in high school, high school English. So any other questions? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. No, okay, I'm good. so I'll see you next week. So we'll see, you next week. we'll see you next week. So Asia, we're coming down to the nitty gritty. You were you were kind enough to wait for. It. Now you got your wish. It's just you and I. Do you, so so what what is your question? Remember that whatever you say, don't mention your grade because you're still being recorded. Of course, I could stop recording if I want to. Let's see if I could find where the um, the switch the off switch is. Yeah, that's that's going to be interesting. 
Um, let me see. I don't want to lose this recording, so that's why I'm not going to try to look for the off switch yet. So, um, what's your question, Asia? <laughs> so my so question, my question was, was, so, so um, um, you had gave, you me, had gave feedback me feedback week before, week last, before last on my, on my um, um, narrative, narrative essay. essay. Correct. And, and I, was I was trying to figure out, out so, so are, you are you asking for five, five citizens plus, plus the, uh, um, the main, the main centers, centers of, each of each paragraph? Okay, so normally when I do, when I do a template, let's see if I can mm -hmm. get this. So normally when I, when I give somebody a, a template, what I do is I write, for example, let's, let's, I'm going to make it up. I became, is this going to work? Yeah. I became a teacher because, for instance, I want to interact with students. I love meeting students of all backgrounds. And I love sharing my love of writing with students. So I guess this would be my thesis. And then, then I would tell people, let's say paragraph two, I love to no, I want to interact to interact with students. Then I write write five sentences about this. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. 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 So basically, you're going to write a story. Basically, you write in five sentences. You write a story. So I would say every week I go to the forums. I go to the forums, and I love. Uh, talking to the students and interacting with them. Uh, Donna, who is an A student, is very intelligent and she shares her love of, of literature with me. So on and so on and so on and until you fill up five sentences. Of, of why you like to interact with students. And then, then the next one, I love sharing my love of writing. Then I write five sentences. I can actually use a person, you know, an actual person. So if you're, if you're writing about how you love being a nurse, you can actually mm -hmm, use a patient mm -hmm. and say, Mrs. Smith came in with an injury. And then after I nursed her to health, I love seeing the way, you know, Mrs. Smith walked in injured, walked out healed. That is the magic of uh, nursing. So that would be, I love to interact with patients. Do you understand? So that would be your five sentence yeah, story. Yeah. yeah. So you can use. I wanted to, I wanted use, to use um, some of um, my experiences. I've only, been, only been a nurse for a little over a year. year. Okay. And I had and wanted, I had to, wanted use to use some of my experiences. I didn't know, I didn't know if, I if I could use. use yeah. My, but, my, but you the can't use the patient's name. name. Well, you can't use the real name, obviously. So right, Donna's right. not the person's real name. But you could say Mrs. Smith, but you could use their circumstances. So Mrs. Smith. Uh, the real person, let's say the real person had COVID and then she had complications, but luckily she was able to overcome them from whatever it is. So you could use the medical record, but you got to change the name. It's just like the psychiatrist, they write all those help books, but then they, 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 they fudge all their patient names. Mrs. Smith came in with depression and she had ADHD disorder. When I went to, to give her therapy, I gave her blah, 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 blah. And now Mrs. Smith, after going through such and such a therapy, now she's much less depressed, blah, 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 blah. You know? And of course, everyone knows Mrs. Smith is not a real name. You, know, you always put in another name, but yes, so you could use case, that's what I mean when I say use case studies, either from your experience or from research. So if you research an article and the article talks about another Mrs. Smith, you could use the article's Mrs. Smith. So yes, you could use that, that, those case studies for to prove your topic sentence. The topic sentence is, I want to interact with students. The first sentence of every body paragraph is a topic sentence. Then all the middle sentences are known as supporting sentences. And then the very last sentence in a paragraph is known as a concluding sentence where you transition into the next um, into the next paragraph. So I would write, not only do I like to interact with students, I also like to meet students of all backgrounds. So that's my last sentence of this of this paragraph. So not only do I love uh, interacting with students, I also love to teach 
students my love of writing or something like that. Then paragraph three would be, I love to teach students my love of writing. So your conclusion paragraph would then transition into the next paragraph. So you have your topic sentence, which comes from your thesis statement. Then you have your five supporting sentences. And then you have your concluding sentence. Do you want me to write that out, the, the different parts of a paragraph? I think you, I think sent, you that sent that to me. To me. Oh, I, I know. Just I just didn't understand, understand the first time. time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and this is what and this is what, this is what we're, we're uploading, uploading for, for our, discussion um, our discussion board. board. Yes. You can you can you can upload just the mind map. You could upload your outline, or you can upload your five paragraphs. That's all up to you. And then and okay. but the, the okay. more you upload, the more I can fix. The better your week four rough draft will look. The less you upload, the, le the, the less you, you get the idea. So it's up to you okay, to decide okay. how much you want to share. And then everybody else, their job is to say, well, your, your thesis statement still needs work, or so-and-so thesis statement is not correctly placed, or can you talk more about paragraph two? I don't quite understand what you're talking that sort of thing. In other words, you tell people if you understand no, no. their paper or not. So that's when you post to two students. You have till Sunday to peer review, and then other people are going to comment on your paper. So that's why at the end of the week, you have to remember to come back to the forum to see what comments everybody made about your paper, and then incorporate those comments into your uh, week four rough draft. That's okay, what you're doing okay. this week. So all right, all right. it's more complicated than if, if we were face to face, I would simply hand out other people's papers to you, and then you would write all over other people's papers. Then you would hand it back, and then everybody would uh, rewrite and retype it, and the next day you hand me the corrected version. That's what you would do if we were in a in a face-to-face -face class. So peer review, oh, okay. peer review is very English composition. It's always been used. Um, so so anyway, any other questions? If not, we can um, I can stop the, the video. All right, thank All right, you. Thank you. You're welcome. So see you next week. All right. All righty.